why do they make electric bike batteries black? In this video, we'll explore the reasons why manufacturers have chosen this color, or lack of color, what is the serious downside of having them black, and what we cyclists might be able to do about that. Stay tuned! Lithium-ion batteries are a complex assemblage of multiple small batteries connected to each other and tightly packed inside a solid casing to prevent them from moving around. The purpose of the casing is to protect the individual cells from the elements and physical damage in case of a collision or in case the battery is dropped. Remarkably, unless the casing is made of metal, it's almost always black plastic. The big problem is that black absorbs heat instead of reflecting it, and in direct sunlight the battery can become very hot. This causes damage to the battery and can lead to premature depletion of its charge capacity. If people took the precaution of only riding their e-bikes indoors, there'd be no problem, but most people I know have the bad habit of riding their bike outdoors. And that yellow ball in the sky emits infrared radiation, which is readily sucked up by those black batteries. So why don't they make those casings a pale color, or even white? For the answer, I decided to consult an expert. So I emailed William, the owner of Scooter Ready, an upper-end e-bike shop that he established way back in 2010, which might make it the oldest electric bicycle store in the Ottawa region. In my email, I asked him, since black batteries become very hot when exposed to direct sunlight, why aren't they made with a pale color? And when you buy an e-bike with a battery encased in the frame, would it not be better to buy a pale color or a white bike? I'll redo what he answered. Hi, Robert. Thanks for your thoughtful question. These are the kinds of discussions I really enjoy. You're absolutely right to consider the impact of heat on battery performance. Lithium-ion batteries, like those used in Bosch systems, are sensitive to temperature extremes. Excessive heat, particularly from direct sunlight, can raise a battery's internal temperature, and over time this can accelerate cell degradation. While this doesn't cause immediate failure, it does reduce overall lifespan and efficiency. To protect against this, Bosch designs its battery systems with built-in temperature sensors. These sensors continuously monitor the internal conditions of the battery and will automatically block charging if the temperature falls outside the safe range of 0 to 40 degrees Celsius. This helps avoid lithium plating in cold conditions and thermal stress in hot weather. Additionally, most lithium-ion cells have an upper safe operating threshold of around 45 to 60 degrees Celsius. Exceeding this range won't result in a safety issue, but it will increase the rate of chemical aging, shortening the battery's useful life. Regarding your point about black battery housings, it's a good observation. Black and darker color plastics are commonly used not because of thermal considerations, but due to its superior UV stability and weather resistance. Black casings tend to resist fading, cracking, and degradation from sun exposure better than lighter plastics. They're also more effective at hiding wear and dirt, and they typically retain their structural properties well over time. These qualities make darker colored plastics a robust and proven choice for protecting battery components in outdoor environments. As for the color of the bike's frame, yes, lighter colors do reflect more sunlight and absorb less heat than darker ones. However, because batteries in modern e-bikes are often integrated within the down tube, they're partially insulated from direct solar exposure. The frame acts as a thermal buffer, so while a lighter colored frame may offer a small advantage in very hot environments, the impact on the battery's internal temperature is minimal in most real-world scenarios. That said, it's always a good practice to avoid prolonged exposure to direct sunlight when parking, just like you would with a smartphone or laptop. Keeping your e-bike in the shade or in a well-ventilated space when not in use can go a long way in preserving battery health over time. And congratulations on the 2.0 version of your camper, stand-up headroom is a serious upgrade. Sounds like an exciting project, and I'd love to hear more about it when you're ready to show it off. Best regards, Will.
You probably guessed that wasn't Will speaking. It was the best I could get out of Microsoft Word. Will's point about black resins having superior UV stability reminds me about my time on sailboats. Over the years, I observed that black zip ties last longer than white ones when exposed to the sun. By searching online, I found that black zip ties are typically made from UV stabilized nylon, which includes additives that make them resistant to degradation caused by prolonged exposure to sunlight. In addition to Will's advice about parking your bike in the shade, I wonder if it would be a good idea to paint your black battery a pale color if you can find paint that sticks to plastic. What do you think? Another idea would be to shield your battery from the sun by covering it with a white bag, or a white cloth envelope of some sort, or wrapping it with white duct tape. Do you think that would be worth doing? Let me know what you think and what ideas you've come up with to protect your battery from the sun. Before I sign off, I should let you know that Will has published an excellent video on precautions to take to lengthen the life of your battery and very important information about what to do when putting your battery in storage for the winter. You'll find the link in the description. He talks about Bosch batteries, but his advice applies to any lithium-ion battery. On the Scooter Ready website, you can also download two free booklets that provide all the information you need to understand and maintain your lithium-ion battery. As for his reference to the camper that I'm building, this is a project that I put on hold for the summer. I'll finish building it next winter. Keep an eye on my channel in spring of 2026. Thanks for watching the video till the end. If you'd like to help this channel, you can do the usual stuff. Give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, which I promise to respond to, share with all your friends, and subscribe. However, there's another thing you can do, and that is to buy my highly recommended book, Sailor Without a Boat, How I Sailed on Other People's Yachts and Lived to Tell About It. You can buy the book on Amazon or from my website www.robertberio.com Reading this book is like gorging on candy. Once you begin, you won't want to stop. Sailor Without a Boat was so interesting that I virtually gobbled it up within a few days. Let's hope that Robert Berio will produce more books like this one. From start to finish, we were carried away with Robert's book, especially with his manner of relating the stories. My husband and I read the book together in bed at night. What an adventurer. What a writer. We were particularly impressed with his descriptions, and especially with his positive spirit and his sense of observation and analysis. It is a wonderful lesson about our world, which he describes so well. I received Sailor without a boat at Christmas and I was not able to put it down. It's filled with interesting experiences and adventures. Robert gives readers a street-smart common-sense approach to sailing on other people's yachts. He draws on years of experience to outline the challenges of blue water sailing with noteworthy consideration to Caribbean waters. The book kept me hanging in suspense at times and laughing at others. Interesting, informative, exciting, a must-read for those with a lust for adventure. I hope Sailor Without a Boat will not be his last offering. At times, I laugh to tears when reading Sailor Without a Boat. Robert wields a skillful pen, and he knows how to say things with humility, passion, and humor. It is a good story that engages the reader while meeting a practical need for those aspiring sailors who prefer not to take on the considerable expense of maintaining a pleasure craft. What a pleasure to read about Robert's adventures and his voyages of discovery. Throughout the book, the descriptions are rich, original, and personal. Robert's unusual resilience makes him worthy of being called a true adventurer. His stories reveal what cruising life is like and how this lifestyle can lead to the discovery of the world and other cultures. This book is not simply a story, but also a learning experience about many elements of sailing, geography, and humanity. 
This is an amazing account of Robert's second life after a career in scientific research. Sailor Without a Boat is a well-written, remarkable collection of stories, anecdotes, and musings about the wonders of sailing, about the environment and about life in general. Fun to read and full of really good stuff. Sailor Without a Boat proves that there is no age to start living the adventure of your dreams. The book relates details of daily life on boats in the middle of the ocean and ashore in distant places. Robert reminds us that the risks of sailing on great oceans and small vessels don't always come from the sea or the mechanics of the boat, but also from one's shipmates. A great read, full of excellent insights, advice and contacts for anyone interested in imitating him. If you decide to buy my book, I hope you'll enjoy it as much as these people did. Thank you for watching and remember, never quit cycling.